It's wonderful to see you all here. Um, very excited to welcome Jürgen Teller, uh, woo, whose exhibition <laughs> is on at the moment, <laughs> and also Biche, Biche Kuriger, who uh, has come at a moment's notice to be with us this evening to ask some questions. Biche, for those of you don't, who don't know, is a, <laughs> an amazing force in the art world, uh, documenter, uh, Kunsthaus oh, Zurich, no, Biennale, Tate magazine. Biennale. Biennale. No, not, docu not yet, though. Yeah, no, yeah. Biennale. Uh, Venice Biennale. Uh, Beecher is a great person who I've known for many, many years. And He's is a great a, jumper. And a great, a great jumper. And, uh, <laughs> and is also the editor of Parquet. That was so noticed smooth. It. Thanks, <laughs> As a fashion expert? I, um, if I may, and I don't want to take... Goes well with my phone. I, I don't want to take too much of your time, but I just wanted to read from you some notes that I made um, in the run-up to the exhibition. Uh, and I wanted to read those quickly, and then I'm going to go and sit up on the stage with Beecher, with Jürgen. Beecher's going to ask some questions. We're just going to talk uh, around various images. Whether Jürgen Teller's photography is art, or whether he's an artist or photographer, or both, or none of the above, or anything connected with such thoughts, can only lead us astray. Teller's work is about great images. It's about Victoria Beckham with her legs sticking out of a Marc Jacobs bag, Kate Moss lying like a smashed doll in a wheelbarrow, or Teller photographed naked astride a piano being played by Charlotte Rampling while inextricably drawing attention to his rectum. Much of Teller's output is destined to grab our attention, whether it appears in magazines or newspapers or splashed across advertising hoardings or CD covers. In a world of images, we believe his stand out more than most for their outrageousness. At least this is how they are perceived in the collective consciousness, as was the case with Robert Maplethorpe until Susan Sontag asked us to look again. Also Boris Mikhailov, whose brutal images of Ukrainian poverty conversely brim with affection. Look again at Teller's images and there's a sensitivity at play. They are warm and compassionate, and this doesn't come cheaply. Surprisingly, all this comes from a man whose slacker surrealist tendencies are met with caution when set against the outlandishness of his position as one of the world's preeminent fashion photographers. But at their core, his images are intimate portraits, rare recordings of time spent with people, dogs, sunlight. One sense is that whether known to Teller or not, his subjects have entered into communion. They want to engage him. They want to make his work work. In the process of lending a hand, some even betray a friendly smirk. And this leads us to the underlying presence of Teller, even when he doesn't appear in the frame. This is a man who clearly possesses a certain kind of humanity, as evidenced by his frequent appearances as a bearded, football-obsessed, beer-drinking German, seemingly predisposed toward nudity and self-exposure. Teller's images are consumed by a certain kind of wild trust that plays out between him and his subjects, a sense of unremitting openness and daring which appears magnified in his own self-portraits. It is undoubtedly Teller's presence that turns, that, that turns those he photographs into collaborators, who in the process allow themselves to be photographed in surprising and revealing ways this even occurs to the partially conscious, as found in an image of a bed-bound artist, Kerith Wynne Evans, whose soul appears to be leaving his body in the form of brightly colored party balloons. While a teleshoot might be associated with an air of emotional intensity or complete and utter chaos, his subjects remain visibly calm, which again runs contrary to popular perception and the perceived intensity of his production. Says Jürgen, I'm just there with them, talk to them, engage with them, work with them, eat and drink with them, have a good time with them, being involved with them and them with me. In the eye of the storm, Teller's subjects are content. They know the company they keep, they share the same space, same desires as Teller, often giving up some of their most tender moments. Think of Björk and her son in the thermal waters of the Blue Lagoon, images of Jürgen's mother or his son Ed staring out of a bath, or the ethereal beauty of Lily Cole as a pre-Raphaelite goddess, snake-like, in a Dominican jungle. These are, in fact, beautiful, restful images. Having surrendered to the moment, photographically speaking, compositionally speaking, note how more or less everyone and everything is perfectly still. 
The world momentarily put on pause. Floating balloons appear motionless, added to which everyone shares a similar facial expression, especially around the eyes, as though seeking something beyond the lens. In shooting his subject, Teller uses two contacts cameras with onboard flash. Once he has isolated the perfect pose, he alternates between one camera and the other, allowing the flash to reload. There's no single crescendo, no loud clap, followed by a puff of smoke. Instead, holding both cameras in each hand, he moves around his subject, sometimes towards them. The flash hypnotizes his subject a slower process than one might imagine. Look again and you can see how they are transfixed by the pop of light as he moves closer. He even does this when photographing trees. It's his way. Sometimes Jürgen plans an image well in advance, as with Victoria Beckham for Mark Jacobs. Other times they just happen. In seeking a photograph that can't be ignored, it's clear how his subjects become complicit in the act of making a successful image. Does Teller feel the need to push his subjects to new emotional heights or force them to do something that they wouldn't ordinarily do? I'm still haunted by this portrait of Ronnie Horn bearing a chest on a New York rooftop. Conversely, does Jürgen have to ask his sub subjects to stop showing off? When asked, he says, yes, there are days, especially with professional models, when he's asked them to stop drifting into a pose. He shows me what he means, tilting his head a fraction. As soon as he sees this in others, he asks them to stop and return to being their natural deadpan self. Then there's Teller the fisherman waiting for the right moment. When he comes, he's right there, just as the subject is giving it their all, giving everything to the possibility of a great image, which can equally include rain clouds passing over a Suffolk estuary or Kirsten McMenemy reaching out for rows across the living room floor. What we see in the image is a record of something that has already been taken in Teller's mind. He saw the shot before the shutter came down. When the here and now was giving great image, is that a squid on a bed? Teller passed out in a plate of suckling pig, a soaking wet puppy held over a sink. Consequently, it is only natural that we, at a later stage in the development of a single shot, become intrigued by the unrelenting appeal of Jürgen's curiosity. The talk's nearly over. <laughs> <laughs> That's the series. Oh, I can't get my feature. would you like to tell me about this photograph and experiences that you've had working with Jürgen in the past? Yes, thank you. Uh, Gregor, yes, I just wanted to say something before. You Please. make a really lively program here at the ICA, and uh, thank you. Yeah, I'm flattered <laughs> to be here. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, yes, I, uh, we worked together last summer. I uh, organized a show at the Kunsthaus Zurich. It's a big museum and I uh, love to uh, or have loved in the uh, past to do these thematical shows and this one was a juxtaposition of 17th century art, Baroque art and contemporary art but I wanted to uh, present uh, this uh, a bit against um, conventions, uh, how you usually show um, old masters and give contemporary art the same space and uh, yeah, uh, um, weight as uh, uh, I gave to the old masters. And um, this, um, this photo is um, um, yeah, very was very important for me to put it also right at the beginning of the show because um, what it uh, shows, and I think it's uh, it's so uh, um, at the core of uh, Jürgen's work is uh, I think he he is sh he is dealing with uh, vitality, and uh, the show was about precarious vitality. And what we see here is, I don't know, I would like to know more about how you uh, shot these pictures uh, at night, probably, at the Louvre. 
and we see the Mona Lisa behind uh, bulletproof glass and with these banisters which hold back uh, these crazy tourists, these hordes which come every day and leave even the dirt on the wall because they, they're waiting to get also their flash uh, image uh, photograph and you also took uh, these images very quickly, not with a tripod, but uh, also with a flashlight, others of the series, and you can see the the lines are a bit crooked, not... Uh, They're always crooked with me. Exactly. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, uh, a good friend of mine who has a, has a, has a great magazine called Paradis in, in, in France, and in, uh, in Paris, and uh, and we, I, I know him for many many years. Anyway, he suddenly said, <coughs> "Do you want to do some news at the Louvre?" And I said, "No, no. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, that's not going to be possible. How is it going to? You know, it's like oh. Anyway, put the phone down, and then he, you know, two weeks later he said, "Well, have you thought about who you want to take to the Louvre?" And uh, and, and I said, "Are you kidding me?" It's like. How, how are we gonna how are we gonna do this in the front of the Mona Lisa? And he says, well, you know, you know, it's just one thing, which when you get older, you start getting connections. And I said, uh, well, are you serious? I said, yeah. And I said, well, I want to take Charlotte Rampling because I always wanted to, you know, it's always me being naked with Charlotte Rampling. <laughs> Never was able to manage to convince her completely. I was I was able to have a look at her pubic hair and pictures and. And fondled her breast, but the whole thing I was never able to get full, <laughs> full action on it, and uh, and I had this other idea where I thought like mm, Charlotte Rampling is getting a bit old, next to cactuses, and I called her up and I said no, and she said no, nah, that's a stupid idea. I thought Oof, maybe it was right. You got to come up with a better idea. And then I had the Louvre in front of me, in, on my lap, right? And I called her up and said, Charlotte, it's time now. <laughs> and she said, oh, what is it now? I said, well, you're going to be naked in front of Mona Lisa. And then she says, and she didn't even have fucking have to blink or anything. She's like, well, how can I refuse you now? <laughs> <laughs> when is it? And, uh, and I got so nervous about it. I got so nervous about it. At, you know, hotel, got to the hotel, and then... I spent a day before looking at it. That, you know, they, they had to kind of uh, tell me. Th they asked me exactly. Louvre is fucking huge, right? I didn't even know how huge it was. I said, "No, I want to photograph here." And then, and then they said, "Well, okay, from six to seven, you're here. From seven to eight, you're here. From seven to I'm thinking, <laughs> why is this so complicated? We could just run it's around and do the whole thing. Whatever. The alarm. Yes, but then I figured out later it, it was like the. They shut off the CCTV cameras for the protection of Charlotte in each room. So I was only allowed to be like very like this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But um, I mean. But I have to say, uh, I was very nervous about it. And, and I said, Wife, you could have come along with this. <laughs> help me a bit. And uh, that was a big help. Because she suddenly got cold feet about it. And then Sadie said, come on, Charlotte, we're here now. Let's get, get your clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> Which I never really say, ever. <laughs> I never do. It's always other people who say that. I am so shy. <laughs> I, I never go there. People, people don't believe that you're shy, but you are. It really is shy. true. It's yeah. always the makeup artist's idea. Yeah. Or the hairdresser's <laughs> idea. But why do they have this idea? I mean, other photographers never come up with uh, all these uh, rows of naked people like you do. I don't have that many naked people. <laughs> I, have, I, have, uh, I have a few. Well, I don't know. I, l <laughs> I like to think of myself photographing landscapes. <laughs> <laughs>
But um, yes, I mean, nakedness in a museum is, especially in the Louvre, it's like ev everywhere. It's uh, all over the place. And, and it's so conservative now. Everything is so conservative, so political correct, so fucking boring, everything. You mean nowadays. in real life? In real in, life, nowadays, right now. <laughs> yes. And then you look at your show and you look at all these old things where like, a, like this old guy wipes a baby's ass of a painting, I was thinking, fuck, that's why, that's what I was doing when I was like, a kid. That's, but it's, you don't photograph it. It's fucking no, you can't go there. <laughs> and th th when was that painting done? 17th century. Right? I go go to prison <laughs> if I photograph that. <laughs> well, there's You see what I mean? Do you see what I'm, where, what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here. <laughs> Here we see um, another of your uh, photographs with uh, two women standing next to marble uh, statues. And of course the women stand like normal women with both uh, feet uh, on the floor and not in classical contrapost. And in front are uh, two stuffed dogs and a, a little uh, chick. A chick. A chick. Yeah. yeah. It's a work by uh, chick. That's a good word. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a work by Maurizio Cattelan, and uh, I told you the idea was uh, the theme was uh, vitality, precarious vitality, and it is also here about introducing life, which is usually uh, left outside a museum. And uh, a dog at the Kunsthaus, you can uh, even bring it to the cloakroom, leave it there, a dog, but um, they manage to get into the museum, but they are stone dead. <laughs> so uh, this is, I mean, if you know Maurizio Catalan's work, it is always a bit about introducing this kind of uh, things which are left outside. And I really like that um, juxtaposition of, uh, of uh, uh, the Louvre photographs and, uh, and the dogs. And do we have another picture of the 17th century? So you see a little bit, yeah. You see on the left-hand side the sausages, the cut uh, head of a, of a wheel, and uh, of course, these were also moral um, moral imagery. Uh, at the same time, the, you see, you understand how the painter loved to really uh, exaggerate and and bring uh, uh, all these uh, all this food together. And in the back, there was then a little uh, scene from the Bible. Uh, you know, where you should then uh, know that füllerei, um, what is the word, anyway? Füllerei. Uh, füllerei. If you eat too much in the Bible in English. Excessive eating, yeah. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> I thought, when she said that, I thought, I'm going to be in that show, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Could I, may I just ask a question? Because you talk there about your being nervous and about you getting into situations which where you, you're beginning to think, I'm, I can't do this, you know, I, I, I'm beginning to go, is there a point at which you have pulled out or you just think, I can't go there, I've had this mad idea and it's now before me and what the hell am I doing? A lot. W w say it again. Well, in terms of, in terms <laughs> of your, the way you challenge yourself and move into the most I'm always, precarious I'm not always, sometimes. but a lot of the times I'm very, very nervous. Yeah. And it's very... Uh, because I don't have a complete final set of uh, how I, how I, how I, how I consecute this, or no, how do you say it? How, how I execute, execute this whole yeah. thing, you know. I have a certain idea, but then I'm sort of loose with it. And I rely on a lot of the subjects, too, yeah. to give me something. So it's, it's, it's never really a kind of a cold-blooded deal of like a script and this and this yeah. and you just have these technicians coming in and da -da 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 and you like boom, 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 do it, you know. So there's always like a run, you know, and then suddenly it rains or this or that, you know, so it's always, I'm always nervous. I mean, you have incredible stories about each of your subjects but then you go you've been through so much with them sometimes. But then you go with, with everything what's, 
you, you, yeah. I'm very good at <coughs> adapting to each situation very in, intuitively, instinctively, and, and I just thought, fuck, I just only live once, and I just go with it. <laughs> and uh, and I think it has a lot to do with 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 sort of, sort of a not a good, very good time I had with my father and and, and everything like that. That I thought. You know, you can just you know just think, well, what are you gonna do with your fucking life? You know, you're gonna have something. You can sort of moan about it, and I do, you know, in a certain way. But and I'm miserable and everything. But but then you have to. It, has, it makes such an impact when you when 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 your father kills yourself, k kills himself, and 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 the impact it had on my mother, at me and everything else, and it was very. I'm sort of like thinking I'm taking possibly, hopefully, the best bits of my dad. That's what I like to think. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want to fucking go and run and do things, you know. You just only live once. And I like to ask the impossible question. You know, who's going to, you know, what's, what Charlotte Rampling's going to say to me if I say, can I fondle your breast? She says, no, you idiot. And I'm like, okay, I'm an idiot. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but if, I, if she says yes, I'm there. Yeah, yeah. Fucking hell, man. <laughs> and that is that is the that's what I try, you know. You, you but the, of course, I'm very, you know. It's not as stupid as simple as that. You have to yeah. be very clever about it. How you phrase your words, and when you ask the question, and everything else. So it's very. And I think, uh, and it, and I don't th really s think of myself as a, of a photographer as such or whatever. And of course, I am, but. I, I use it as a way of living, but, uh, and it gets me to exciting places, <laughs> and I, 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 uh, it's great. I mean, um, you you do advertisement photography, you do art photography, but I think if I see an advertisement, it is it asks, "Am I still alive, or am I just a consumer?" And that is, I think, this kind of existential note or drive, which is uh, so interesting. And so you not i mean i'm not I'm not interested to think about you. are you more of a advertisement <laughs> photographer or a, mm. or an art photographer it's, no, that, that, it's not that, that, an that interesting question. question no no, that's not at all or you like do you distinguish between you know this and that and the other I'm thinking it's all blends to one and also you seem it seems to be like almost at one level about the art of access and the access that you're, you're but the, you but yes but the, you know it's like uh, it started really like well anyway i went to photo college blah 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 and everything else but then really when you when i was young i got really you know when you were young you got really into music and and uh, there i am taking photographs and everything and and it was pretty a close move to to because I think my visual language came from TV and from record covers you know I sometimes bought record covers because I, I liked the way it looked and that's how it you know the big sleeve not the CD crap thing stuff what I'm doing now <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, and and that, that that made a huge impact with me when I was a late teenager and early growing up and uh, and then if, if like, when Shinya O'Connor asked me to, to photograph her, and then that single, then, Nothing Compares to You, went number one, had a massive impact on me. On the world, yeah, but on, 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 on me personally, it's like, I'm th oh my God, I'm like actually culturally shifting something. You know, not some, some weird art, thing which five people are interested in or some rich collectors are interesting it's a, it's a you know of course that's a great thing too i'm just you know i'm not here or there but that's how i started with with this whole thing it's, it's interesting forgive me it's interesting because it feels like sometimes it is just from your own curiosity that much of your work grows and from a self perspective yet at the same time it's it's so incredibly democratic it seems that if I give you an ex I could, I've been telling you about how many people have been coming to see the show, but it just seems to touch so many people as to surprise even me, I have to say. And it is incredible to see how you've 
taken this inward view and managed to take it to the world in such a way that people respond to it as well. I mean, not everyone, I would imagine, responds to the vision of, 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 a, of a, a photographer or someone or an mm. artist or whoever. It, it, it's a rare thing that you seem to have. What, what, how is it you're able to reach people the way you do? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just good, I think. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> that was a joke, but uh, I don't know. But do you think you get to people in the process? Are you, you know, they just I, seem to reveal themselves to you in. I think I'm, 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 I'm very loose and I'm very honest, and I show my insecurities, mm. and uh, and, uh, and then I show exactly what I want, mm. and it's very direct and it's very. I don't know. You know, that's what I do. <laughs> it's up, up to other, you know, it's, oh, I can't say that. But you've been able to also negotiate incredible images. I'm very interested about this the question that you ask. Out of being curious, you had a question for Ronnie Horn, for instance, in terms of what might be under her jacket. Well, that's normal, you know. I like Ronnie Horn <laughs> is like, I really liked her work, yeah. you know first see her work and then I meet her by chance, by accident, at Steidl. And for me, I'm, a for, I'm, a, I'm German, so f Ronnie Horn, I thought that was a guy, but actually turned out is a woman. But I'm meeting her and she looks like a guy. And, and her work, that was interested me, that, that's how I knew her first, right? And so she looks super intriguing. And I, and her whole gig is like kind of this kind of guy thing. Mm. But she's a woman, right? So I'm, thi I'm thinking, well, I want to have a look at your tits anyway. <laughs> that's how simple it is, really. And that's how that picture... <laughs> and, she, and, and, yeah. and if you make it clear, yeah. she, she obviously understood it and showed me her breasts. <laughs> that's how it is. And you remain... Be you've remained best buddies, I think, ever since. You keep yeah, of course, we were great, good yeah. people. No, I wouldn't say that to anyone, you know. Of course, yeah. I knew Ronnie yeah, yeah. F for a very long time before I asked her the question. It would be impossible to, yeah. <laughs> to, 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 to do that, you yeah. know. I, 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 that's what I mean. You have to be very clever when you... Tell us about your... Do your thing. Tell us about your experience with Vivi Vivian Westwood. Just about the, the images that are in the centre of the show which we at one point were hovering over, how do we do this exhibition? And it seemed that these three pictures landed um, early on. And from that, the whole exhibition seemed to, to grow. Um, I must say, it's wonderful to see those images. And I love this connection between Vivian Westwood and the ICA and what you were doing there, it seemed to me, was connecting the institution as well, uh, to the institution as well through your work. But what happened that day with Vivian? Because again, it's important, I think, just to tell a little bit more about how you engage with these people, with these subjects. No, I knew her for, for a very, very long time. Like, I think more than 20 years ago, I, I, I photographed her. And uh, she is quite an extraordinary woman, I have to say. She really is intriguing. I like her a lot. And. That's basically the angle, you know. If I'm like interested in someone that I then I explore it further. Same as Charlotte Rampling, or you know, or you know. And uh, <clears throat> but then after, and then I, we over the years, over the twenty years, we worked here and there on 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 something, and 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 then I thought like, ooh, actually I I, ma I make an active step actually to to say. Do you know, what do you think about if I would photograph your campaign, but, but you and your husband should be really in it, because that would make the most sense for me. Anyway, so I've been doing that for like the last four or five years or something. And it takes a lot of effort to do all these fashion photographs and everything. And, and, and I, of course, you know, you noticed her, her white, skin and her orange hair and everything like that and, you know and the obvious thing for me was like uh, you know I would like to have a look how it looks uh, and uh, I'm far too shy to do that 
two, two. And, uh, and, and then I, and I was even too shy to ask the husband. And I asked this kind of, <laughs> the Christopher, the kind of uh, very important person at the, and I don't exactly the, the title of what he does, but uh, very important person at the Vivian Esport office. And he said, uh, oh my God, that's a great idea. I said, oh, thanks, great. <laughs> I'm really happy about that. And, uh, and then, you know, he said to the husband, and then the husband said, that's a great idea. And then the husband said to her, you know, what about, and thinking, you know. So I didn't really have to do anything, <laughs> if you see what I mean. Yeah. And, uh, and, and again, I, I, I was too nervous, so, so Sadie had to come again, because I <laughs> hope my aunt and my son, I was thinking, oh my God, this is just freaking me out too much. How are we gonna do this? How is this gonna look? So anyway, at, at, uh, and she invited us for Sunday dinner. So we'd get there, doing dinner and, you know, <laughs> chewing on some celery and whatever, not what we had, healthy food and this and that. <laughs> and uh, I got more and more itchy on my, on my chair. And then Ed, who was like, I don't know, can't remember, three, four years old or something, on his thing, and saying, what are we doing here, Daddy? He said, well, I'm trying to do some pictures. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> And then, uh, and then uh, Vivian said, so when are we doing these bloody pictures? <laughs> and I said, oh, okay, let's do it now. Where do you want to do it? I said, no, on that couch, just there. You know, obviously I knew her house, so I knew where I wanted to do them. Anyway. The color of the pillow? Uh, uh, it was all there, I knew that, yeah. yeah. It's good. Yeah, it's good. I haven't gone down to the pubic hair color yet, <laughs> to that extent. But anyway, uh, and it was a sort of a like a English house, double things, and uh, so I was doing these pictures there, and, and my son came to me, and, and, and he said, uh, "Daddy, what are you doing here?" I said, well, uh, "I'm." I was really interested in how she looks naked. I'm going to do some photographs there. And he's like, <laughs> went back on his uh, computer, like, Xbox, you know, what was it? Anyway, I'm getting a bit drunk now. <laughs> Nintendo. <laughs> 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 and uh, I don't know where I'm going there. Because my <laughs> wife makes me nervous to say not too much. So I'm like, anyway, that's how it was. <laughs> <laughs> I, ju I just wanted to mention, uh, yeah, we had an incredible experience with one particular room in the exhibition, which was the reading room. And um, Jürgen really let rip. You, I mean, I remember, we, Jürgen, you were in there at one point, just on one wall and one area of the wall, and then it just absolutely exploded in that room. And it, f it, it felt to me like it was a great release. And actually following on from what Pabiche is saying, that sense of, you know, that it, 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 it's somehow life-affirming, the work, and that you know, the product is secondary, there's something more important and above it, even in the commercial context. And then this idea started as, the, uh, uh, this idea started as, I'm gonna show my tear sheets. And I remember we left you in the room and you were in there for a, a good week, I think. It was just like, we kind of, we lost you in there for a moment. But can you just talk a little about what kind of experiment this room was? Because I know that you're now going on to make a, a new publication based purely on this room. Well, I thought, beginning with this conversation, you were very, very keen to do some sort of big thing and everything. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought, God, what are you talking about? Your space is so little these two little rooms upstairs and this big room and everything, how can we do ca some kind of, you know, I didn't really want to do it in retrospective whatsoever. And, uh, and, but you were very keen to have the Bjork picture, the Kurt Cobain picture and all this sort of thing. And I'm thinking, and well, I want to just show like much more new work, like, you know, 
my mom, mom walking around in the forest, which I'm really proud of, kind of thing. Yeah. And we got stuck there in a in a way. Not 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 stuck is not the right word. That's where the conversation ho you know, hovered about. Yeah. And um, and then you showed me this room, and I'm thinking, what a fucking shithole is that? <laughs> 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 And uh, that came to another thing. And then, you know, and I always have to come back to my lovely wife to <laughs> to for some advice. And then she, 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 she just, you know, she hardly says anything. And, it, and, and, and she gives me so little attention. <laughs> but when she does say something, it's, and then I run with it for a long time. And that's what that is. You, you're, it was the first time you'd seen, as it were, this this first time you'd shown all the photographs in a way spanning many years. It's about twenty years, a twenty year time span of photographs in this room. And I just remember you were sort of really, really delighted seeing O.J. Simpson next to you and Charlotte Rampley. It was like your whole universe sort of. Yeah, unfolded. because I normally never would fucking do this. Yeah. You know, if it's a nice layout, nice book, and everything with borders, whatever. This photograph next to that photograph doesn't fucking work, right? What, what's the story? It does not work. Or this and this, and you, you have to uh, chronologically oh, yawn, boring, uh, blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, then because of this f pasting wallpaper scenario, it's just like, fuck, boom, 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 boom. And suddenly I got really excited. But now I'm getting really even more excited. I'm getting a bit mad, actually, because <laughs> I re photographed all these walls in different sections. So now my studio is full of wooden boards, plastered front side and back side, with 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 all these. Uh, tomorrow morning, I can't wait for for nine o'clock in the morning. I'm going back in the studio, wallpapering more things. Re for digital. I'm digital now. I'm in love with digital. This is the first digital show, isn't it? In a way. In yes. Of, um, yes. You, I mean, this is great. I, I think that's a, that's been a bit of a myth that you would. All these use press to people use. Ever said, oh. Yeah. The other thing and everything, yeah. well, gone, gone in a different direction now. And digital has allowed you to print this enor these enormous, That's these right. enormous photographs. That's right. But also, as I know it's a, 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 what I would refer to as a difficult space. Um, <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you describe it otherwise, but it's incredible to me. Whenever I go in that room, it's packed. There are people in there for like 20, 30 minutes at a time. And there's something going on in that Even spot. my mum went in there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it, is, it seems to have um, had a very real impact on people. You mentioned the digital because I remember we were doing a press talk at the time and, and, uh, and I said, is it, you know, because you collect cameras and you collect old film and you have to get sometimes old, old cameras from eBay. Uh, it's a technology which is now gone. And so, um, and I know... It's, it's not gone yet. No, but yeah, but possibly on its way. And then, um, but in the middle of it all, it was like, you know, Jürgen only shoots in real film. And in the middle of that press conference, you said that. You said, I, I love digital. And it was the case that that picture we were in front of at the time. I, ju I guess I just used digital in a different way. Yeah, you way. said, I could never do this mm. before. And all these huge, yeah, exactly. No. And then all this stuff, you know, you sent, I know, I'm still amazed by it. I sent these things with, you know, my. George sends something on the computer and suddenly arrives in New York. I'm still amazed by all this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do you choose the size of a print according to the Very room? carefully. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yes. I make a model. You know, one of those... Uh, I don't do it, but someone in my office does it. Uh, uh, how do you, you know, like a model, like a big model, and then you have the... Like the biggest size you possibly could do is like this, and then this, and then this, and this, you know, mm -hmm. and then you you. Because I uh, I saw you show in Milano in the Palazzo mm. Reale, which uh, had small but high rooms with uh, all these ornaments, and uh, there you had not even frames. You had sometimes the photos just uh, hanging but in big size, and it was this it was sort of intimate, but at the same time, the size were, was in your face. Yeah. And 
I thought that was uh, really very successful mm. as an experience to walk uh, through but through an exhibition. Yeah, but I also like you know, it, it, you know the way I talk might might sound all a bit like like this, but uh, you know I've probably been to that Milan space three times, visited, thinking about it. Should I do this? Should I do this? Should, should I have vitrines? Or which way should I choose, and, everything. and so everything is a lot more planned than I might my my, my 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 English slang, yeah. you know how I'm talking now, you know, because <laughs> that sounds very. But you're you're so this incredibly fast uh, person when you take uh, shoot pic pictures, but then you are uh, slow and take yes. a lot of time in yes. rethinking the whole yeah. thing, yeah, and making books and and even even. Even the projects I choose, you know, I have like so I have so many requests of advertising fashion companies, this and this, and I very I, I try to, you know, I'm very careful of who I say yes to and no to because you, you know, it's an instinct of of like no, that's not the right thing, you know, like they're choosing me for the wrong reason. I'm gonna run into problems later on with what they think they buy me for or you know so you so you have to turn down a lot of things and, and be very careful what you what do you choose to do do so you spend mm -hmm. a lot of time sitting in your studio doing all that mm -hmm. crap mm. and a lot and so a I do a lot uh, you know I hardly do any pictures in a way mm. but when I do them I do them fast because it's exciting how do you balance the, these uh, these sort of arenas Irene involved the work which is in the concourse here with photographs of um, your 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 mother in 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 the woods on a walk uh, was is is a great work. It's very important to you, and in 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 the process of putting on the show, it was becoming uh, always present that there was this branch of work which was away from the commercial sphere, which was absolutely wanted what you wanted to do. In fact, before you went into the what's called the reading room, you you were really on Irene and Bald. I remember you mm. wanting to get back to the woods and capture different mm. seasons and so on, and that had really got your attention, yet it was so far removed from your, as it were, um, the commercial work, that it was your own, it felt like your absolute neutral project, your mm. own project. How do you make that, how do you balance those projects in your, in your day? I, I don't know. Uh, uh, sometimes I'm super gets me down all this commercial work I do but I, I do like it you know it gives me immense pleasure afterwards and, and, and you know who's going to say work's easy it's a fucking struggle to do anything Wh whoever, whoever does anything you know sh shouldn't be all fun you know but I do struggle a lot creating commercial work and it, and, and it looks so easily done, but you know, I get really frustrated and, and, uh, and there's so many commercial conservative restrictions which I have to deal with. And, uh, but I try to hang in there. And uh, on the other hand, it gets me to places with extraordinary yeah. opportunities, extraordinary places. And I do find the whole thing super exciting. And, uh, you know, if I only would do my own work, what the fuck would I do all day? I wouldn't know. I mean, you only have so many ideas. How many times do, do I want my mum walking around in the forest or something? <laughs> you, know, you know, that's like one idea which, which came to me after I'm, she's my mum for 48 years, you know. Do you know what I mean? But I think, I mean, just to add that, I think that also some of your commercial work has, has led to some of the most iconic images of our time. I mean, for me, seeing the Björk image, um, I love the... But that's not even commercial. It's like being, yeah. being like Björk, who I like, asked me to go to Iceland, and she shows me Iceland. What's commercial about it? You know, it's like, yeah, I come along, and, and we have a good time. It's great. Do you want to go on tour with Nirvana? Yeah. No, it's too commercial. <laughs> but as you say, Fucking as rock and roll as you can get. <laughs> but as you say, that access that you're getting offered, I mean, the opportunity to photograph 
Victoria Beckham and what you went on to do with her, I thought was important. Yes, no, we, 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 I mean, that was a really well thought through thing. Does um, the bag exist yeah, in that legs. size? Or no, of course, we had to produce it. <laughs> I don't know how much it cost. 20,000 pounds, dollars or whatever, to produce this bag. And then I thought, no, maybe, maybe, maybe we do it this size. Maybe we do it this size. It's super expensive. Everything has to be... Uh, uh, you know, and uh, if I would have gone to LA and I said to hey Victoria do you want to jump in this bag and I'll just <laughs> put your legs out it's a great picture she would have fucking <laughs> thought I've, uh, that's not going to happen is it what about my face <laughs> <laughs> so I had to for, it took me three months to convince her to do this photograph yeah. and then the act of flying to LA being in the studio having this bag there and I said go in this thing <laughs> that, that was like the least of the that took like and, uh, just an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. the but bump. the picture, the, the whole thing was like three and a half months. Or two and a half months, yeah. And when, when, do you, when do you feel... What is this? Does anybody know the, the score of, 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 by, <laughs> of, uh, of Real Madrid against... Uh, <laughs> can yeah. anybody look in, in some Google thing? Yeah, I said, oh my God, this is such Man a bad against Real. Real. <laughs> There's an important football match on. Uh, so if you, if you wish to win lots of brownie points. What? Half time? Yeah, huh? Yeah. Second half. Who scored? What? <laughs> Ramos, one goal. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's we fucking will, own goal. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to questions soon, I suspect. But um, Jürgen, very briefly, I know that you're a big fan of Boris Malaika's pictures. Mm. Because he is, I think he has an incredible humanity about his subjects. And uh, I always feel his complete involvement in each and single, each photograph of why he is doing this photograph. I feel him in the photograph. I feel he is from the photograph. It only c can come from him, the photograph. It's like a Rocky. Uh, and, and only he has a particular reason why he takes the photograph. And he loves his subject, subjects. I, I think he's like me. <laughs> In a way, you feel him so strongly in each photograph, and he has so much. He has energy, and he is. He has uh, love, and he has. I remember. I thought, I did a quite, quite something at the time, when 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 I did a book with Scarlo, and I, and and I, and I did this book Gosies, and it was. Exactly the same size, exactly the same page account, and the same size. It was 480 pages, and I thought that was pretty good, pulling off this Gosey project, which is like the girls coming knocking on my door, right? For over a year, and I was at Steil, and Scalo printed both books, and 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 of course Boris Mikhail was first, and it was printed at Steil. And uh, he did case history. That shut me up completely. That was fucking insane. I've never seen anything like that ever in my whole life. And that is good when you don't see anything ever in your whole life. I count him as the, as, uh, as uh, very good. 
is the, is, is the everyday, is, is that your mission to ca catch a sort of realness, a sort of love, and a, 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 an, a, an enduring human quality? Is that what goes on in your pictures? Mm, don't know. That's not my, my, that's not my idea of what I want to do. I don't know what I want to do. You know what I mean? That's not like what I know. But I really feel for Boris. You know, I think he's a, he's a I had, I had two shows with him over the years, and, and meeting him as a person, the whole thing is there. It's, he's, he's a fantastic human being. You really feel why he's doing these photographs, and you understand everything. He's so heartfelt. And I really, uh, I'm, he drives me on to continue to be good, or trying to be good. It's exciting to see something of his. <laughs> I was just gonna, I was just going to ask as well because you, you met Boris recently in the flesh and you've also met me. Ben, yeah, did you meet his him and his wife or was? Uh, no, 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 no. Who was it? No, I've been. I, I know him for fif fifteen years. Yeah, right. And I had two shows oh. with him. Yeah. So no, I, I recently he he I cooked for him in yeah. London and we photographed each other. <laughs> Also, you mentioned something about Eccleston, and you'd met him, and he was talking about the photography as a good way to get out of the house. Is there some good. encounter? Yes, yeah. yes, of course there is. <laughs> Jürgen, few things in common. <laughs> Smoking, drinking, and women. <laughs> photography just gets us out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> I, would like I gave up smoking, you know. <laughs> well done. Uh, <laughs> if I may, I'd like to sort of turn some, um, I think now's a good moment for the audience to um, ask some questions if they could. Obviously, we'd welcome regular updates on the football throughout. <laughs> Ramos' own goal, I can't believe it. <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, um, a microphone should wing your way, should you have any questions. Um, if you could put your hand up, that would be very, very kind of you. There's questions uh, down here, please. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to ask if you have any project you always wanted to do over the years or you were always dreaming about and you never had time or opportunity to do. Mm. No, if I do kind of think of something, then I just do it, in a way. But I'm swifting around with one idea, but I'm too scared of it. But because I, a year and a half ago, I went to this um, school reunion of mine, 30 years ago. It was frightening, back in my village where I come from. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and, and it was in a, the meeting was in this pub, sort of how do you call it? It wasn't a pub, but it was a restaurant stroke in Germany, kind of Gasthaus. Sagt man da? Wie sagt man das? Pub? Gasthof. Yeah, but in English. Aha. <laughs> 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 anyway, and it was. It was called Gaia's Nest. How do you call that? <laughs> <laughs> a it means like nest. vulture's nest. That was that was my meeting after thirty years. I haven't seen any of those pupils. Vulture's nest. Right. I'm thinking I've got to do a book about this. But I, but I got I got so nervous and so drunk meeting all these people. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still struggling, but I'm, I, I, that's the project I do want to do, but I haven't got the courage yet to do, do so. They, do they know your work, or not at all? Well, that was the that that's the scary bit. They do. They came with newspaper clippings of the whole thing, <laughs> and, and and they they knew everything about it, and I couldn't remember half most of them. How they what they the the whole thing. They look that they, they look frightening to me. <laughs> I had to go. I had to go in the bathroom, and I ordered some schnapps and everything. <laughs> and I had to put some water in myself, thinking, "Have I really? Do I look as old as them?" <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> 
uh, I don't know whether I'm going to... That's what I want to do. Th that answers the question. Very good. Um, there was a question in the middle, and hi. Um, I don't know how closely you are involved in the curating of your own exhibitions, but uh, just thinking about this one, um, that little room uh, decked out in uh, magazine tear sheets. Um, some of the images from there, one also comes across on the. Uh, um, upper floor, but there they are presented in, in frames um, in these rather kind of odd sizes that are, um, you know, bigger than a magazine page, but smaller than those gigantic prints at the back. Um, I'm also thinking about, was it at the Moscow Multimedia Art Museum that, that, that you had a show recently, uh, where again, I think there's some overlap in the pictures, but uh, there, as in, um, in Moscow, they were presented with uh, in Moscow? Yeah. 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 So, so there they were pre presented with uh, little stories attached. Yes. As well, so uh, much like the uh, uh, the forest pictures here. Yes, yes, So yes. This, this form is shifting. Because, you know, the uh, the frame ones upstairs here, they, they kind of strike me as a little, the size strikes, strikes me as a little bourgeois in a way. Um, as in kind of meant for, I don't know. It's domestic, maybe in Syria, but uh, I find so it really hard to understand you. I think, uh, I, no, I think just, just so this form is shifting. Yeah. This form is shifting. Is it something that you form? What? I know. It's, it's, it think is, about. Does it matter to you? Give, or give, just just say, say it again. It's, it's about the idea that in the reading room there are the, there are the same images, like the, um, the dog mm. under the, mm. in the, the, the under the tap and Bjork, all appear in the reading room. But there mm. they are. No, in, posters in, in, upstairs. There in no, in a way presented. Yeah. You, you know, I, I take a long time of thinking about going to the sp rooms, the spaces, the galleries, the museums, whatever, and, 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 uh, and uh, you know, because I have a lot of, uh, lot of material to choose from. It could be, this whole thing could look entirely different if I, if, if you know, in, in nine months' time, if, 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 you know, because I wake up in a different way and, you know, and you... Things change, or you do one bit of new work, and the whole thing would look totally different, because it in, in, it involves. But uh, but I do take a lot of time of what what would be in this black room. How can you do it? What would you do? You know, or so I think a lot about. Uh, uh, yeah, that's. I mean, that, the, the reading room seemed like a great burst, a release of images out out of a. Let's say that, as as was being discussed, a kind of frame. There was also a little bit like, also a little bit like, yeah. trying to. I think that's quite important, to. You know, because obviously it was very important for me to have a show here in in, in London, after I haven't had a show here for ten for about ten years, so that makes you super nervous because you had to be good, doing something here. But that room, in a way, was was thought. I don't know how this room is going to turn out. What are these wallpaper? What's the quality? And how is it going to? And I thought, like you know, it's it's a way of taking a risk, which which I in a way I always do if I do an editorial. And I'm thinking, why are you know like this is a museum show? Or you have a show at Gagosian, or you have a show at New York, or you have a show there. It's just you know. A lot of the times, people take too much sort of uh, respect of these things instead of just fucking. Let's just have fun and do something. I think that's what it is, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Jurgen played a, a huge role in in the putting together of the show in terms of the different sort of scales and, and levels of engagement and intimacy. And actually, it's interesting for me going back to the magazines that, the, the, you know, just to see that the work for me is really... It started with the there. magazines. You know, it's it, no different. And it started with the magazines. Yeah. But then I got away from the magazines because I started to, yeah. to, to dislike the graphic designers' interferences, the magazine's layout. So and at the end, I just want to show my work. Mm. I, I you know how certain like ID pages from 1994 or or the Face magazine, they had like this graphic designer had this idea of like wow doing some 
graphic on my pictures and I'm thinking, fuck, I don't want to have that. I just want to have my, my work in a way. And then I, then I got into that. Erica, the young girl whose, whose dog uh, appears twice, both in the reading room and upstairs, was just thrilled to see it in both locations. And she'd come down to London especially to see it. I don't know if she would have had any particular uh, preference, but just seeing more of her own dog was for her a good day. Hunting this, and then some of them were um, a bit more positive, and you also No, 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 only two. <laughs> only two were positive. Only Everything, two were positive? Like about um, but 495. I added the, the, added the negatives down to about 298. Uh, but uh, that is together in... Uh, you know, that is not a different book, but it's together in a in a how do you call it? It's a slip, it's a slip, it's a slip case, and uh, and I was just intrigued having a having a column uh, for a year and a half in a German newspaper, which is reaches a lot of people. Well, I was going to say, I I suppose people would probably think that in Germany, uh, people might be a bit more uh, open about. Yeah, but it, I, I, I just want to say that, that this newspaper we're talking about, the Zeit magazine, uh, something so excellent, in a way, would have never happened in an English newspaper. They would have never given me a, a, a pure page where I, I, I could, from my point of view, print a beautiful picture or an interesting photograph and write about that. An English newspaper here would have would have they all it's just all crap, it's it, it is it is all celebrity obsessed and and this and that and the other and blah blah blah, and I have you know, it's easy to attack this German readers' letter thing. And of course, it because it reaches two million people, you know, and. Uh, I don't know where I'm going with this story. Mm -hmm. but, well, uh, I was going to ask about the idea of censorship because I know. I, well, there was a. They what did you it mean? anyway. They printed. They let you. No, they put didn't. Those they didn't because there was a lot of time. I was like, oh my god, oh, oh, we can't print that. You know, that, that was. You know, I, I had to be very reduced no, with what I was. No, no, no. Come on, uh, come <laughs> on, yeah. <laughs> He's the editor. <laughs> My God. And the Zeit is a very well respected intellectual weekly newspaper. Intellectual, you see. Yeah, it's, I, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, the Zeit, yes, yeah. it is. And, uh, That's and right. they have a magazine also. And, um, so English newspaper would have never been <laughs> impossible to do something like that. But I, I was like, you know, they they said, oh, we got such, you know, the, the 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 newspaper said, oh, we got such a good response, and there's also some bad responses, and uh, <laughs> and I said, uh, you know what, I don't really want to, you know, I have an idea, I don't re even want to know any of these bad responses, but can you please, from early on, I thought that, can you collect all the bad responses? Because I kind of thought that was interesting, and they were all there, and there was a there was a folder like this thick, and after after a year and a half when I did that, and the, it came, I looked at my chair in my studio, and I looked at it, and and I, and I sunk into my seat. I was thinking, this is awful. I'm, I'm a horrible person. This is just getting worse and worse, and for for like about. 20 minutes, I, I really like questioned myself. But I just thought this is, but, but then maybe it, I can't remember exactly what moment, I thought this is excellent. I'm gonna turn this into a book <laughs> and call it literature about Jürgen Taylor. If we could just take, I think it's one last uh, question. I think there was someone at the Back, or am I imagining things? We're up against three things football match, impending lawsuit, Jurgen wanting to go to the loo. Uh, <laughs> there it is, sorry. Uh, let's do this uh, if we may quickly, and then um, that would be very kind of you. Um, any news on the football? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. 1 1. one, one. one. <laughs> if you have to take a photograph of one footballer, who would it be? <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah, difficult. Yeah, probably. You're probably messy. Why? <laughs> <laughs> like the way he looks. <laughs> More than Balotelli or Joey Barton or... The Balotelli, no way. <laughs> Fuck, he did his own photograph. He did his own photograph better. You know, those guys, you know, I, I can't really add, add to any of this. You know, they, I don't think... Many people ask me, oh, you're so much into football, do you only want to photograph this person? I'm thinking, I'm thinking what do I do? How can I enter this, con this thing? You know, you watch them doing their fantastic things on TV, doing all their magic tricks, you know, running around, sweating around, celebrating. It's all there. You don't need me to take a photograph of those people. <laughs> it's all there. So that's why I chose, in a way, you know, Pele in bed as my surrogate dad. That was a better football picture, for me at least. Oh. Oh, oh, good. Okay. On that That's bombshell. exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, first of all, just so you've been a great audience. Um, Beecher, thank you so much thank for being you. here. Thank you. Jürgen, you've given us a great show and it's been great. With, and thank you for being so generous. It's been honest, it's been brilliant. Thank you very much, Jürgen Teller. Thank you. Thank you.